so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the same. Open your Bibles up tonight to Proverbs chapter number 14. Proverbs chapter number 14. Proverbs chapter number 14. A lot of folks go through the book of Proverbs and typically do it. They do a proverb a day and some of you may do that as some of your Bible reading in addition to or an add-on. I would challenge you not only to read a proverb a day, but to pray through a proverb today. Just to literally read it and pray through it. And ask God to be able to reveal what God wants to reveal. I'm interested in starting in verse number one. Verse number four is the verse that I want to get to. But I want you to notice in Proverbs 14 the contrast. Everything in the first three verses are night and day different. They have a complete opposite. It gives you one side, and then it gives you another side. It teaches us that there is something that is significant about a choice. There's one thing that we've stated many a times that we have to agree upon tonight is this, is whenever we're faced with the truth, it requires, it demands a decision. You don't have to choose to respond, but by doing so, you've already chose not to accept. Every one of us come to a place in our life, and that is the success of a Christian life, because we understand that you can't go to heaven by acknowledging that there is a Christ, by acknowledging that there is a God, by acknowledging there is a heaven or hell. But there's a choice. There's a way, and the Bible says that Jesus made it plain, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by me. There's a choice. You have to choose the Lord, not because we can work that, or we can merit that, or we can uh, function or, or, or manufacture that. No, the Lord has to come to where we are, and when we are confronted with the truth, when we understand that we are a sinner, we have to choose. Do I trust the Lord? Do I believe that He is the substitute that He died on the cross for my sin and He rose on the third day. Do I believe that? There's a choice. Well, Proverbs chapter number 14 is the same thing. It gives us a great contrast from one to the other and teaches us 
that there are choices that we must make. The Bible says, following the verse number one, every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. He that walketh in uprightness feareth the Lord, but he that is perverse in his ways despiseth him. In the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride. The lips of the wise shall preserve them. Notice verse number 4. Where no oxen are, the crib is clean, but much increase is by the strength of the ox. I'm interested in that verse because when you come to that verse, it's a great principle that's here. You understand, you see that it tells us very plainly, it says where there are no ox are, the crib is clean. If there's anything that we need tonight, it's to be able to keep things in order in our life, to be able to walk, be in discipline, trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. However, what it says is it changes our mind because it follows up and it says this, it says, but much increase is by the street of ox. Now, why is that something that seems to be significant? Because if we're thinking about with our mind, with our human mind, maybe I should say it that way, we would think just like anything else in life, that if you want to be able to keep the stall, if you want to keep the crib clean, what do you do? You keep everything out of it. Uh, if you want to keep the stall clean, you don't put the horse in there because when the horse comes in there, the ox comes in there, it's going to track mud. It's going to ha have different things that's going to happen from this animal. So the easy way out is to be able to remove the very thing that brings in the problem. So let me put this in perspective. Oh, we want a great church, so let's keep the sinners out. Let's go further. Let's, we want a great ministry. We, we want a great music ministry. We want all this great youth program. So let's keep the people out because we understand more people, more problems. If we really want problems, we got more people. But here we want a clean church. We want a church that honors the Lord. But in our human mind, and listen to me now, there's a lot of church folk that think this way. We think we got to be absent of all. We can't be contaminated. We're scared to death. But the Bible says that there's strength with the ox in there. So the way we think is not the way God thinks. And the way we desire it is not the way God desires it. And we get so holy and dignified and self-righteous that we want to exclude ourselves from all these things. But the Bible says, yes, it matters to keep the crib clean. But without the ox, there is no street. I wonder tonight, what's your desire? Do you want everything to be right? Do you want everything to be the way that it should be? I mean, the truth be told, we, we all want the crib to be clean. We want everything to be in order. Maybe I should go a little bit further. We all want the product, but we never want the process. We all want a great church, but we don't want to go through the difficulties. We all want a great marriage, but we don't want the trial. We want a great ministry, but we don't want the hardship. And what the Lord's teaching us is that there's strength. There's a molding process. There's a teaching process in the difficulties of life. And if you're not careful, the flesh is going to say, I don't want this. The flesh is going to say, I don't deserve this. As a matter of fact, our self-righteousness is going to say, I don't want to be around this. But be careful, friend, because if the Lord Jesus can do what he done, being amongst sinners, and he can die, and he can overcome hell, death, and the grave, and he can do it without compromise, so should you. Maybe the difference is that you're not as spiritual as you think you are. But we want a strong church. We criticize everybody else, thinking it's our job to clean up. Who cleaned you up? Was it a Holy Ghost? Or was it a preacher? Who cleaned you up? Was it a friend? Was it somebody else that corrected you, called you out because of a different belief or even a Bible conviction? Listen, you can have your Bible convictions. But until the Holy Ghost teaches somebody, you're never going to win somebody by making them feel guilty. you got to love them. This upcoming Saturday, there'll be a lot of, forgive me, there'll be a lot of ox walking in the door. There'll be a lot of people that don't have it all together. They don't look like you, smell like you. They probably don't even drink the same drink that you drink on Saturday night. It's going to be completely different. But Jesus died for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We want to be able to reach this community, but yet we get too good. And I've said it many times, and I'll say it again. Listen, if we want to be a, a church that makes an impact, and I truly believe this, and, and this might be something that I down, and I understand that, but I believe that a community ought to be reflected in the church. I do. 
And until we see this church reflect this community by race, by the different cultures, and it's, it, it's a community, I'll be honest with you, my, my desire, what God's put in me, I'm not satisfied because I believe we are put on 4210 Sabrina Lake Road to reach this community. Thank God for the people to drive for minutes and moments and hours to be able to come to church sometime. I praise the Lord for that. Very humbled. Never take it for granted. Maybe sometimes I do, but it's not by choice. I don't overlook it. But I would dare say that there comes a place where we got to realize we want to open up the doors. One man said it this way, open them doors and open them uh, wide, let them sinners come inside, and then they followed up, closed them doors and closed them quick before them sinners start to throw those bricks, right? So we don't want to be that way. Can I get an amen? We don't want to be that way. We do want, we want folk to be able to come in here. We want people to be able to learn and grow. I, I've said it many times. I said it recently, and I'm not boasting about him, but I talked about Russ and, and different things. I mean, the truth be told, I mean, Listen, how much did we tolerate with him? And I hate to use that term, but we tolerate with him. Man, tonight he's at church. He's trying to serve the Lord, trying to do the right thing. And I'm just using him because he's not here tonight. Man, I can remember when I first came to this church, we're so careful to be able to let anybody do anything or, or sing in the choir because they ain't got this. Can I tell you something? I, I wasn't even a member of the church when I sang in the choir. I hate to bust y'all's bubble. Everybody gets mad at me because they're not members. They get mad at me because they're not eloquent in their speech. Therefore, we shouldn't let them teach. Do you know the first time, I'm going to lose some of y'all. Do you know the first time I ever taught the Bible in this church was out of a new King James Bible? <gasps> I know. But somebody loved me enough to invest in me. They taught me the right Bible. They taught me what to believe. They didn't condemn, they didn't, uh, condemn me. They didn't push me away. They, they allowed me to be discipled the way that God disciples. We've got so dignified and so pretty in this church, scared to death, somebody's going to mess it up. And I'm going to tell you something. God will close them doors if we don't get our hearts right. And I'm not going to be a part of that. I don't want to be a part of it. Now let me make this plain. He said the ox there is strength, but he also still said keep the crib clean. There's a balance. Where's that balance come? It comes by upkeep. Let me ask you this. How do you walk with God? Not because you're spiritual on Sunday, because you get up on Monday and you die Monday. You die Tuesday. You die Wednesday. Y'all with me now? You die Thursday and Friday. There's upkeep. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? There's upkeep. Every single day, there's upkeep, upkeep, upkeep. You got to die daily. Let's get a little more personal. Oh, we want to have kids until all of a sudden they're two and they got toys everywhere and you trip all over and then you got to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. You step on one of them and you get it stabbed in the foot. Can I get a witness right there? I mean, literally. Things happen. We want the joy of kids. But you know as well as I do, sometimes things get a little messy. You put a kid down in a and a high chair, before you know it, man, you got peanut butter on the wall, you got bananas on the wall, you got them all over the face, spaghetti noodles are on the wall and everything else, but here's the deal. You don't throw your kids out, you teach them. You teach them discipline. You teach them how to walk. You teach them how to talk. You love them. You're patient. So, you know, we can do a lot of things for children, those who we choose to love. Maybe that's the problem. We don't choose to love people as much as we think we do. Now, understand me. God didn't say, keep the ox and let it be dirty. God said, keep it clean, but let the ox be in there. There's some things we got to put up with. There's some things in our life, if you want a strong marriage, listen, you might want to be exempt from a lot of heartache. There's nobody that wants to go through a tough time in their marriage. But there's going to be some things that's going to happen in your marriage and it's going to strengthen you. You can't just throw in the towel and walk away and say, well, bless God, we got rid of him or we got rid of her and everything's right. It might be right in your eyes. But if two shall become as one, How's it work for you when you decide to be able to have it your way and not work through the problems and let God work it out? We do so many people that way. We're in a generation, we're not just our generation, my generation, but even the older generation are so quick now to where we just write people off. I mean, I've seen the generation that's taught me that have just quit on people. Are you listening to what I'm trying to tell you? I mean, I'm talking about there's people that are still out there dying and going to hell. And a lot of the generation that's not coming to church tonight is because of the other generation that has pushed them away. 
And it's almost like the devil's just dividing everything up and wonder why in the world can we not get back to where we used to be when the Lord, I mean, simply puts it, I'm the Lord, I change not. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So it's not God who's changed, it's God's people who has changed. If we're not careful, we'll sit back and we'll criticize every non-denominational church, not, not we, you, because I'm not, I'm not going to criticize them. We'll criticize every other church for growing and doing everything else. When the truth be told, they might not teach the same thing. They might not preach the same Bible. And they might not have the same doctrine. But there's something very significant about them that they don't see all the time in us. And it's called the love of God. So you tell me why, if we believe that what we teach and what we preach is true. Number one, why are we so dogmatic about it? Number two, why do we try to feel like we got to push it down somebody's throat? Number three, why in the world we're not growing if we think we love as much as we do? We should love people. Let me just be honest with you. Listen, friend, when my Aunt Billy cooks, I love them, man, them peat loaf, pintos and meatloaf that y'all cook me, and man, them sweet potato pies and that pumpkin pie, and, and man, all that slaw and all, everything that you can bring to me. I absolutely love it. But can I tell you something? It's nothing like to me when my Aunt Billy cooks that or in the morning when she cooks that country ham and that red-eyed gravy in them. And man, that, that, that just, that the way she makes those scrambled eggs just right, those cat head biscuits can come out of the oven. Praise God, got mayonnaise, got a cut tomato. I mean, y'all understand what I'm trying to tell you. I mean, it's like the table is set. And you know what? I want folk to be able to come eat at my aunt's house. Listen, if I know it's good eating, I want people to be able to come eat with me. Can I tell you something? I love this church. We ain't the best church. We're not better than another church. But I love this church. I was saved in this church. Called to preach in this church. Baptized in this church. Married in this church. Listen, the Lord has grown me in this church. Not just by the Lord, but God has used God's people in this church. This church matters to me. I want to invite people to this church. I love this church. I know how this church molded me. But here's where I'm crossed many times. Do we still... Or are we still willing to love, be patient, disciple, groom, mold people today in 2019 with all this fancy stuff as much as you were with this young boy when I got saved? And if you choose to say, yes, we are, then you tell me who you're doing it with right now. If that's really who you are, you tell me who is it right now that you're investing in, you're loving, you're molding, you're discipling, you're grooming, you're being patient, that might not just be the way you can deal with it. You know, it's amazing. We'll, we'll watch kids as long as we can tolerate them. Amen. Miss Kelly Mosley, you love me, right? Good. All right, praise the Lord. Can I tell you that little girl that she's got, well, she's not little no more, but Bailey? Listen, Tiffany, man, she can get Graham over there. We've had all kinds of kids, babies come to our house and different things. You know, it's easy whenever Bailey was having all those terrible nights, it's easy to be able to say, no, we, we can't sleep if we watch that baby. Some of you don't know, but when that baby was, uh, when she was young, I mean, literally, I mean, it was like at all night she was crying. The mom and dad couldn't get no sleep. But you have to choose not just who you're going to watch because it's convenient. They sleep when you sleep. If you're really going to love and invest, and I'm using that because this is passive, we understand the application that's here. Listen, if you're going to watch one kid, why not watch them all? Because you don't want to admit that you choose who you want to watch. You choose the kids that's in your house. And I, you got the right to do that. But you choose. You, you, you choose all that. And you got to protect your home. But can I ask you something? Is it your choice or is it God's choice? Because I feel like a lot of times we're choosing who comes in or who comes out or who can do this or, or who can sing and, and, and who, can, who can teach and, and who can labor and who can serve. What about let God choose? When's the last time you've you done that? God, what do you think about this? Let God choose. Let God choose. Pray about it. Some people are so quick to be able to judge as if we're God. We got the authority and the power to be able to dictate who does what, who don't do what. When truth be told, we ain't even cried your name out to heaven. Everybody all right? I mean, listen, I'm telling you, I, I believe that God wants and will do great things in our church. But we got to understand there's a fine balance. There's a fine balance. And he comes here to Proverbs 14.4. So what's he saying? 
He's not just saying this to teachers and preachers. He's saying this to all of us. That if we want God's best, we're going to have to learn how to balance out keeping the crib clean, but keeping the ox present. As long as you and I walk with the Lord, as long as we're part of a local assembly, listen, for us to have the best of God, we're going to have to keep working daily and weekly in this church, praying over people, loving people, cleaning things up. We're going to have to keep praying every single day. But meanwhile, though there's upkeep, we can't kick the ox out. As long as we're here doing our job, there's going to be oxes in. And some of those are not people on the outside. Some of them's on the inside. Somebody say amen, 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 and amen. That's the success. You want a strong marriage, you're going to have to make sure that you keep that marriage strong, but you're not going to be absent of trials and heartaches. You're going to have to face some things. Let me give you three principles, principles but I'll be done. Number one, there's a purpose to be fulfilled. What is that purpose? I want you to notice what the Bible says. Verse number four, the Bible says, The crib is clean, but listen, but much increase is by the strength of the ox. So what is the purpose? The purpose is this, is simply that God wants to give, listen, much increase. God wants to give much increase. It's very plain. He says in verse number four, but much increase is by the strength of the ox. So in other words, we all have hopes, we all have desires, we all have dreams, we all have things that we want. But if we're going to get what God wants us to be able to have, we got to be able to trust the Lord that God always knows best. There's a purpose to be fulfilled. And what is that purpose? It's God's purpose. It's not the way we want to look. It's not the way we want to seem. It's not the way we want to come across. It's not the color we want in this church. It's not the style we want in this church. And I hate to bust your bubble, but I'm the pastor, and i got to accept it the same way you do. we got to want what God wants. There's people looking for a real church. I'm talking about real church that loves real people that's made up of real people that are saved by real grace and the blood of Jesus Christ that know what it's like to be saved, to be discipled. They're looking for something that is genuine and authentic to where they can fit in. Ken Bowman said it this way, some of our doors are so narrow that people can't even walk in them no more. And I know what some of you think. Right now you're thinking, well, ours ain't narrow, bless God. Look what we got in here. Shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on you. And shame on you. It shouldn't be that way. Because I can promise you, listen, in this church, I could go back to where flaws that me and Sean's made. I could go to flaws me and Shane's made. I could go to flaws that all, all, People, I'm so, I can tell you some stories. You thought, oh, I can't believe they're doing something in the church. Listen, if you knew us, but by the way, that's not just us, that's all of us. But look what God's done in our life. Look how God has changed us and used us and, man, blessed us. God has been so good to us. Why? Because there was a local church somewhere down the road that said, we're going to keep it clean, but we're going to keep the ox we got to have that same heart and that same desire because God said, if you do it my way, I will give you the increase. And by the way, that's the way God works. That's the way God works. Trust in the Lord, walk with God, understanding that it's going to be trials, there's going to be tribulation. By the way, isn't that what the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter number 5? It says that you may be established and strengthened and settled. I say it all the time. But in the verse number 10, he says this, after you have suffered a while, after you have suffered a while, after you have suffered a while, you can't get settled without after you suffered a while. You can't be strengthened until after you've been suffered a while. You can't be settled. You can't be strengthened. You can't be established until after you have suffered a while. In other words, that is God's way. Do you understand that? That is God's way. And we're going to have to go through some things. And we're going to have to grow through some things. By the way, in that same chapter, the devil, he also has a, a job. And that's to steal, kill, and destroy. He said, be sober, be vigilant. Why? Because the devil, your adversary, he's as a roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. See, the Lord, the Lord unsettles us and messes us up to settle us. The devil unsettles us and messes us up to kill, steal, and destroy you understand that? But when we do it God's way, God gives increase. By the way, you see, I don't know if that's really 
The heart of God. So what is the heart of God? Listen to this. Follow along with me. You don't have to turn because I'll be quick. What is the heart of God? Luke chapter number 2, verse number 52. Listen to this. And Jesus, listen to this, increased in wisdom and stature and favor with God and man. Do you understand that it's God's intention for you and I to be able to grow in wisdom and stature and favor with God and man? That's the Lord's desire, that we would grow, that we would have an increase, if you will. The Bible says, if you go over to the book of Acts, chapter number 6, listen to this, verse number 7. It says, it says uh, of who the apostle they prayed, they laid their hands on. Uh, I'm sorry, it says, and the word of God increased and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. So listen, the Lord wants us to be able to multiply. We want us to be able to grow. But the disciples grow, listen, as the gospel grows. That's how God increases. When we make the things of God big, God blesses. God sends the increase. We're so busy trying to dictate and manipulate and control everything. And we wonder, why is it not the way that God would want it to be? Why are we hitting roadblocks? Why do we sense something that is an uneasiness? Why does it seem like this cannot just catapult through? Why, why, why? Maybe it's because we've made the right thing, the, the wrong thing. we made the main thing, not what the main thing should be. Listen, it's about the gospel. That's what matters above all things. The Bible says in the book of Acts, chapter number 16, verse number 5. Listen to this. The Bible says, so that the churches, listen, so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. Everybody says, I don't want a big church. Well, you tell God he was wrong when he did it. You say, I don't prefer it. Well, you said it right. You don't want what God wants. Preach on, preacher, preach on. Oh, yes, friend, listen, I, I love the small church atmosphere. I don't want to ever outgrow who we are. But to be able to think we're out of the will of God because we're growing us up, that's not the way God works. He sends the increase. You go a little bit further, the Bible says over in the book of Ephesians. we read this to you, Ephesians chapter number 4, verse number 16. From who the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by, by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working and the measure of every part maketh increase of the body to edifying of itself in love. You know what he says? I want the church to grow. I want the gospel to be the number one thing. I want the church to be able to grow in number. But listen to what he says. He says, I also want them to grow in their love. Can I ask you something? Are you like Jesus when it comes to your love? He said, bless God, I know the Bible. I'm doing this. I'm doing I understand it. But are you like Jesus when it comes to your love? He said, well, we got a good church, man. We're preaching Bible. We're doing all, okay. Do you love like the Lord loves? What's love? Love is a choice. Love is action. Love is not a feeling. Love is not a feeling. It's a choice to be able to put somebody else first. It's not, I feel like I want to talk to them or I feel like we agree. I'm glad that God don't just love me when he agrees with me. Amen. Amen. You know, there's people, I, I see them out public. I'll see their kids. I'll see different things. Man, they'll just walk on. Let me tell you something. There's preachers that ain't even my pastor that if I'm in their area, I still walk up and shake their hand. I'll see some people out in public. Man, they'll just ignore me, act like I don't even exist. Not that I'm somebody. Do you understand what I'm saying? We, we choose to love the way we want to love. How, how could you be at Walmart, see your brother or sister Christ, and you want to hide behind the aisle like nobody sees you? Oh, we can't talk to sister so-and-so. God forbid we'll be hearing about everything else. Well, I'm glad Jesus don't treat us like that. I was at a restaurant the other day. Sorry, I had to look around in here for a moment. I walked up to a table and I seen, I seen somebody sitting there and they had alcohol on the table. They go to this church. I love them. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I think they might have been hiding from me, but I wasn't hiding from them. 
right? I'm not mad. Can I tell you something? I don't love them no less than I love you. Because truth be told, they might drink one time a week, but you might be bitter every day of the week. Preach on, preacher. I mean, I just, listen, we can't choose how we love. And if we're going to grow, we're going to grow. The Lord's going to increase, but he's going to increase in number. And also the love of God is going to increase in this church. And you listen to me. You can stay on the wall all you want to. Preach it all night on Saturday, Sunday night. You stay on the wall. But if your love don't grow, if your mind ain't focused and you ain't there for the right reason, you'll fall off the wall. You might not choose to get off the wall, but you'll fall off the wall. Because you're going to get so weary holding on to something you shouldn't be holding on to that you're not going to be able to hang on to what God wants you to hang on to. Amen. The Bible says in Colossians chapter number 1, y'all stay with me. Just talking about how the Lord increases. Colossians chapter number 1, listen to this, verse number 10. The Bible says that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all preaching, being fruitful in every good work and increasing, listen to this, in the knowledge of God. In other words, for you to be able to grow, learning the Bible, learning what God says. Do you know what my heart's desire is? My, my greatest heart's desire, even above the love, all these things. My heart's desire as a pastor is that you know and you choose to love the Lord. By every time we teach, preach, or anything in this church, that's my heart's desire, that you know, know the Lord. Literally, for me to lead, feed, and intercede. That's my desire. Now, I believe to be able to have a strong church, you need to be able to have, you know, strong preaching. You need to be able to have a great music ministry. You need to have a great uh, a young person ministry. You need to be able to have uh, all the ministry to be able to help. I believe that. Obviously, I mean, we do that. But my heart's desire is that you know the Lord, that you know Him. That way on the outside of this church that you and your family, you can walk with Him. You can grow with Him. You can make decisions in the absence of your brothers and sisters in Christ. And number one, you don't, you don't just praise the Lord when you're in church. You praise Him outside of church. You don't just shake hands with people in the church. You also shake hands with them at food line. Amen. It's amazing. I mean, man, you see somebody in here. I mean, me, I'm the pastor of the church. I see them in here. They're like one whole person. You see them outside, they're completely different. Completely different. You're like, what in the world? God wants us to grow. Colossians 2.19. Listen to this and I'll move on. And holding, and not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together increaseth with the increase of God. Here's the point. God wants us to increase. Now mark it down. Not as the world increases. God don't want us to increase like the world wants us to increase. God wants us to increase in all of these things. But here's the key, and I'll move to my second point. It's not going to be done without an ox. There is a purpose to fulfill and it's God's purpose. But the crib will not have any power. It will, have any, it, will not be effective. it will not be effective whatsoever if there is not an ox that is present. There are going to be, key word, issues. There's going to be problems. So the second thing I'd say to you would be this. Not only is there a purpose to fulfill, y'all stay with me, I'm almost done, but there's also a price to pay. What's that price, Brother Jason? That price to pay is, is simply having that ox in there. You want to be great for God? I want to ask you something. Are you willing to pay the price? Are you willing to be able to go through the things that God wants you to be able to go through to become what God wants you to become? Are you? Or you just settle with a life of ease. Do you know when you study out the book of Jeremiah, chapter number 48, I believe it is, maybe verse number 5, I could be a little bit wrong. He talks about Moab and he talks about Israel. And he says, Moab, you're of no use. You want to know why? Because you've, just, you've been settled. You've never been emptied vessel to vessel. Do you know why God could use Israel? Because they were emptied vessel to vessel. God has to. Pour out, pour out to get all the impurities out of there. It's a cleansing process. Some of us are just so easy with a life that is just easy and clean. 
not contaminated, not threatened by anything coming out. And I, I'm not saying let your guard down, friend. I'm talking about balance. I'm talking about balance. And God says, if you're going to be what you need to be for my honor, my glory, it's not going to be a life of ease. But for God to get the glory, it's going to be some hardship. It's going to be some hardship. It's going to be some difficulties. I don't know, maybe I'm preaching to myself because there's a lot of times I think, Lord, it ain't supposed to be this way. And can I say it's not one day, not two days, not one week and the next week, not one month and next month. Listen, my marriage, just like today, I mean, man, me and Tiffany have been married for almost 15 years and all of a sudden, boy, she snapped my snap. I got to go back and apologize. I can remember a time when I was so stubborn, it'd take me two days to apologize. Yeah. But you get closer. Am I telling it right? You get closer. You go through some things and you learn some things and because of that, it makes that bond strider, st- stronger. It makes us be able to draw closer one to another. And that's the same way it is with the Lord. Listen, if we want this church to reflect the love of God, we're going to have to go through some things. God's going to have to humble us. Have to humble us. Have to humble us. Humbling's not easy. We say it is, but if you say it's easy, then you're probably not as humble as you think you are, because it's not easy. It's easy to quote, he must increase and I must decrease, but it's not easy. Some things cut us to the core. Some things rattle us. Some things make us uneasy. If you could permit me just for a moment. Paul was talking to Timothy. You go over to the book of Timothy. Just listen to this, if you will. Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter number 3. Listen to these verses. Listen. But thou hast fully known my doctrine. Paul's talking to Timothy. He's giving him advice. Listen to this. Manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, peace. But then listen. Persecutions. Afflictions. He said, you know these things. You have, you have seen these things. So what, what do you say about them, Paul? Listen to what he says in chapter number 4, verse number 5. But watch thou in all things, listen to this, endure afflictions. In other words, there's a lot of things that I want you to learn, Timothy. I want you to be able to learn how to be able to have patience and have doctrine, have the right manner of life, to be able to understand purpose. I, you know what I want for you, church? I want you to be able to have faith, and I want you to be long-suffering. Look up here. It's what I want for you and your children. That's what I want. But I know for you to be able to make it, you're going to have to endure some afflictions. In the same way that you would look to your children, and that would break your heart. You might not believe this, but it does bother me. When I see that you and I go through some things because God has got us up on the wheel, He's molding us. Sometimes it's going to take a hard break for us to be able to get to where we need to be. But I want to encourage you tonight, listen to me, endure afflictions. Be willing, listen to me, to pay the price. Be willing to pay the price. I wrote this down. What's it going to take for us to be able to do that? We're going to have to be able to make a choice. And remember that only you can pay it. You want a good marriage? Listen, can't, can't nobody else make that decision for you. You have to make that decision. You want a good solid church? I was talking about it the other night. Everybody said, well, what do you think about this? What do you think about our music? What do you think about only having a couple deacons? What do you, what do you think about? What do, what do you think about getting involved? Preach on, preacher. Yeah, it's, it's so easy to judge from the outside. Won't you get in the battle? Won't you get in the battle? You say you are. Yeah, you choose the, you choose the, the battle where you battle. Why, why not get in the battle? Get, get, get in the fire furnace. If not, just pray for them. Just pray for them. So easy. You and I both prayed for marriages strong. I wonder how often we serve the Lord with our family. You say, what's that significant? Well, you know your Bible. I don't have to tell you. The Bible says that two shall become as one, right? God created man with purpose. 
He said, it's not good for a man to be alone, therefore he created a help me. That means that help me is not somebody to be stepped over. There is much to be in as one purpose as what the man is, but brought together, they fulfill what God wants them to be. So if you're not operating in a purpose for God and serving the Lord in some capacity, how are you and your marriage reflecting the love of God? That's Bible. Amen, Brother Larry. You say, I pray for a family. How often do you pray with them? How, how, how often do you, do you teach them what the Word of God says? He said, I want a strong church. Are you faithful? Do you give? Do you tithe? It's so easy to want something. It's so easy to want something. Who's going who's to pay the price for it? So many different things we, we, we go through all, all day. I mean, we, we always say we want this. We want that. I want the power of God on my life. How often do you pray? Because I want to see the Lord do something. I, I, I want to experience God. I want God to move in this service. Praise God. How often do you pray? It's so easy to say, well, it's their fault. That hindered the spirit. It's the preacher's fault. How often do you pray? So I just, I want, I want the Lord to move. I want the Lord to use us. I want to be able to reach out in this community. I, I want a strong missions program. Praise God. Do you give? Do you give? And let me go further. I'm not talking about just your money. Do you give your life? A dollar will never substitute a life given. Never. Never. It's not going to happen. Not going to happen. You say, I wish I had a solid Sunday school teacher. How often do you pray for him? I wish God would give us, I know we got a bunch of pianists, okay, well, how often do you tell them you love them? I wish God would give us solid youth leaders from junior church, king's kids, and teenagers, all that. Okay, how, how often do you go to these leaders and say, Thank you. When's the last time you did it? You wanted it? There's churches all across looking for a pastor. I Listen, and I'm not, I'm going to preach on the outside. Let's act like I'm somewhere else, okay? I'm not talking about Pastor Appreciation Month and birthday. How, how often do you love your pastor? Appreciate. Get, get, it, get in line. Get, get in line. You know, it's easy to be able to pass somebody, but get in line. Follow the vision as God's put on. How easy you do that? We always want something, but we don't want to pay the price. I wish they'd fix the air condition. That sound. How, when's the last time you thanked those guys for the labor and dedication? I'm preaching it straight, friend. I can promise you I'm preaching it straight. Because he's saying very plain, keep the, keep the crib clean. But you got to keep the ox. We can't have it without, without battles. We can't have it without struggles. Number three, and I'm done. I'm done. Not only is there a purpose to be fulfilled, there's a price to pay, but lastly, and I'm done. There's a principle to remember. And what is that principle? Well, it goes back to the first three verses. Everything's got a contrast. The principle is that you have to choose. You have to choose. Look up here and I'm done. When that marriage gets hard, you have to choose. When the ministry is not what you think it should be, you have to choose. When things are uneasy, you have to choose. When the burden's heavy at night, you have to choose. When life blindsides you, after you have suffered a while, you may be established, settled, and strengthened. You have to choose. And here's what I'm asking you tonight. You want God's best? When's the last time that you didn't accidentally try to get there and you, you could recall a service? Wednesday night, Sunday night, Sunday morning, about whatever it may be. When's the last time that you made your way to an old-fashioned altar and altered yourself and said, Lord, 
I choose again. I choose again. I choose to keep on going because it's about your glory, not about my life of ease. I choose to love my spouse and love my children. I choose to be in this ministry, though it's not perfect. I choose. There's people that's on the verge of giving up, throwing in the towel. Can I remind you what the Bible says in the book of Galatians, and I finish. You come, Miss Taylor, if you will. I'm done. The Bible says, in due season, look up here, in due season. It says, don't get weary. In due season, there's a shift. Again, I've only been married 15 years. Some of you have been married longer. I can remember the first few years of our life. Listen, we were so busy with ministry that I wasn't even leading my family. I mean, we were always at church. But then all of a sudden, the Lord, the Lord began to teach. And I can say that my home is better than it's ever been, not what it should be. But God had to break us put us together I can remember when I first started pastoring man I could fight hell with a water pistol thought I had it figured out and then God still to this day is breaking me teaching me that there's a great dependency upon him but I had to choose I still trust you Lord I still trust you and you face many difficulty and you know as well as I do, there's been a crossroad. And I want to say this to you tonight. I, know, I wish the whole church was here. I know we got some visitors and others that's here tonight. But I want to say this from a pastor, no matter who your pastor is. My desire for you and your family is that you've learned in this church, under this ministry, how to no matter what happens, and no matter who's with you, no matter who's leading you or who's walking with you, that you have learned to personally choose to trust the Lord. That way when a name is gone and a personality is gone, when a beautiful building might not exist, when churches are not being planted and altars are not full, when the choir is not able to sing or maybe there's not a pianist. We've been through things like this. Listen to me. That you can choose that though people change, and by the way, that means you too, that you know that you can trust the Lord. And by trusting the Lord, there is somewhat of a trust for each other. So don't tell me you trust the Lord, but yet you can't fellowship one with another. Preach on, preacher. Amen. I got a hard time thinking that you're right with God when you're not right with somebody else. Just being honest tonight. That's the way the Lord put it on my heart. I want to see you years to come. No matter where we are, she start playing. Serving the Lord. Choosing. Serving the Lord. Choosing to be able to serve Jesus, trust Him, walking with Him, not bitter, not hiding from church. And we know a lot of people like that tonight. You do. I know I do. I want to see you and your family serving the Lord. You and your kids serving the Lord. Still believe in the Bible. No matter what personalities, no matter who heroes, no matter what fails you, what leaves you, what forsakes you, when you don't think it's fair, there's one thing that you choose, and that's to believe this blessed book. The day that I let you down because I'm not the man that you thought I should be, or the day that I don't notice what you want me to notice, or pray for you, or call you, or text you, that you still trust the Lord. Because it's not made up about me, it's made up of Him. Haynes Baptist Church is nothing about Jason Holly. Not one thing. I'm telling you. This is God's church. God has brought you and I to where we are. And whatever God chooses, listen to me, is best. How do we do it, Brother Jason? 
keep the crib clean, but you better keep the ox present. Be willing to deal with what God wants you to deal with because only through that ox will God be able to teach you what God wants to teach you. It's about the journey. It's not about the destination. You understand that? It's not the product, it's the process. But you're going to have to choose. I'm trusting the Lord. When's the last time that you altered your life and told the Lord again, Lord, I choose you. Father, I love you.